Every solar installer in the UK is banding about this MCS certified logo on their adverts, on their uniforms and on their website. But what does it actually mean? What does it mean for consumers? What does it mean for installers? Is it a scam? We're going to find out. Beep. Right, let's start with who are MCS? Well, MCS, it stands for Micro Generation Certification Scheme. Now, they are self-appointed regulators of the renewable industry. So if you're going to have renewables installed in your property, MCS are going to be the nominated regulator, but it's not mandatory. It is an optional opt-in scheme. Now, a big part of their objective is quality assurance, but not just for installers. They do regulate installers, but they also regulate the products that installers fit on installs. But you've decided you're going to be an MCS installer. How do you go about getting approved for this scheme? Well, there's multiple layers to this. It's not just as easy as applying online and paying a little check you have an office audit. MCS assessors from a third party organization are gonna come out to your office and make sure you have all the paperwork required to make sure that your installations are going to be compliant. They're also gonna take a look at some of your business documents as well. So do you have a health and safety policy? Do you have a hierarchy? Do you have a complaints policy? Do you have all the basics you need to operate as a good functioning business in the UK? Now, once that's done and once that's been passed, they're then gonna go to a job where you have installed some measures, the measures you are applying for. A measure is the technology. So if you're applying for solar panels and batteries, they'll wanna go and see a job and they're gonna do an audit on that job to see does it meet the standards set out by them. In addition to that, you're then gonna have to sign up to one of these consumer protection bodies. And once that's all done and you're approved, then there's some ongoing monitoring, but we'll get back to that later on. Now for a homeowner, why is this important? Well, when you have a renewable technology installed in your property, let's take solar and battery for example, you're gonna wanna get some payments for exporting energy to the grid. And when you ring up your energy supplier and say, hey, I've had solar, I've had battery fitted, how do I get my export money? They're gonna say, fantastic, have you got an MCS cert? And if you've not got an MCS cert, they are gonna make it super difficult to get paid for export payments. If export payments were a big part of your game plan, then not being able to claim them because you don't have an MCS cert sort of throws a bit of a... What is it? A spanner in the works. <laughs> okay. A spanner in the works. on the hold to my insurance company. I've spent £15,000 on solar panels and battery and I want them insured on my, uh, my house insurance. Sorry, yes. Oh. So, it turns out that a lot of insurance companies won't actually cover you for a solar install on your property if it's not MCS certified. That's what they see as the gold standard and sometimes they'll actually refuse to insure the entire property unless you have an MCS cert. So then you decide, we're gonna sell the house if we can't insure it. You put it on the market, you sell it, you get to solicitors and they say, do you have your MCS cert? The buyer wants it, the buyer's mortgage company wants it. Oh, I didn't get one, can't sell the house. We've established that these MCS certs are pretty important for anything to do with renewables. And if they're that important, what are they actually looking at? What are they regulating? Now, well, like I said before, when MCS come out to certify an installer, they have a number of checks on that installer. Do they meet the minimum standards that MCS set out in their guidelines? But also what they do is they regulate the products. So solar panels, mounting systems and batteries, these are all tested and regulated by MCS. Now what isn't regulated by them or what isn't managed by them is solar inverters. Now I think this is pretty strange because a solar inverter is a crucial component of an installation, but MCS, they devolve that responsibility to the ENA, the Energy Networks Association, because it's all to do with grid connections and why I find it a little bit strange is it is a crucial part of solar design. We actually did a video on this somewhere on the screen about making sure you specify the right inverter for your solar system. So the fact that MCS don't regulate that to me feels a bit odd. 
Now all of this is starting to make sense. We've got our regulator, which is making sure installers meet the minimum standards. We're regulating products. We've got energy companies. We've got insurance companies making sure they're only paying out money or protecting assets that have been installed to the minimum standards set out by MCS. So why is there so much negative press about this regulator? Well, it's pretty complex, but some of the main concerns that people raise is all to do with the assessment process. So to be an MCS installer, you have to have that office assessment and you have to have the site assessment. Now this can be a little bit of a box tick exercise. One way to pass the office assessment is to buy a pre-done software package that has all the forms and all the documents built into it. Now, as the installer, you do need to actually use this system to be able to pass the assessment. You need to enter all of the company information, you need to do some dummy projects to show competence that you can use and navigate this system. Now the actual site inspection, it is a non-intrusive inspection, it's a visual inspection only. So they'll come out to a property and look at it and say, yep, they're on the roof, they look all straight, they don't infringe on the minimum standards. Let's have a look at the battery. Yep, it's got the clearances, it's in the right place. What they're not going to do is start pulling covers off, doing testing, making sure they've got the right earth readings, making sure the right breakers are on the system. That is all covered under the standard electrical regulations. So it can be really straightforward to get past the assessment. If you know what you're doing, you've got one of these systems and you're competent on site, the actual office assessment and the site inspection, that's not gonna be a problem for you. Other concerns that people raise is around the ongoing monitoring of installers. It doesn't stop poor installs. If you can pass that assessment and you do one good job, you are MCS certified. Now, MCS are making changes to this and they're trying to put in different levels of monitoring depending on your installer status. But you could theoretically right now pass one assessment do an unlimited amount of installs for like a year until your reassessment and you could do a year's worth of trading or really poor installs and MCS wouldn't really know there is an issue unless they're getting lots of consumer complaints. And as such, it's starting to get a bit of a reputation for like a pay to play scheme. You pay for your initial assessment, you pay for the certs each time you do an install, and your MCS approved, there's no consequences for doing poor installs until an investigation is launched. Now, if you're gonna use an MCS certified installer and you want that certificate at the end, what does it actually cost on top of the job? Well, an MCS standalone cert, they're about 35 pounds per measure. So if you're having solar panels separate to a battery install, you would have two certificates. If you do it in one, you would have one certificate. Where it starts to get expensive is with these consumer code bodies because £35 for an MCS cert, that doesn't feel too bad. But these consumer codes, their prices start from about £50 and can go up to £250 per install. So that is really expensive. And what starts to compound these costs is the cost of the annual assessment. You've got the initial assessment, that can be really expensive. You've got the software you have to buy, you've got all the licenses that you need. And as a small installer, that is a lot of cost to have as a base load before you've even gone out and installed an actual job. Now for a consumer, what this boils down to is if you're using a large installer, you're probably paying around 200 pounds per install in red tape certification and MCS fees. If you're using a smaller installer, it probably works out a little bit more expensive because they have less of a economy of scale on those baseline costs. And that can have quite a negative effect on the industry because if you're a smaller company, there's a big hurdle just to enter the market. And from a consumer's perspective, if there are more people in market, then prices come down because that's capitalism. Now, if we assume that everything has gone well with your install, you've paid your certification fees, you can now apply for the Smart Export Guarantee, you can get covered on your home insurance, and if we sell the house, we're all okay. But what happens if something goes wrong on your install? Are MCS gonna be there to pick up the pieces? The answer is kind of and no. Now, 
what's going to happen? So you have an issue on your job, you're not happy with it. <laughs> you can contact MCS and say, I've got one of your certified installers here. They've done an install, I'm not happy with it. Now MCS will take this pretty seriously. They will contact the installer. We've had a complaint. This complaint needs to be resolved. What they can do is lean on that installer to make sure that installation is brought up to the correct standard and they leave the consumer happy. And if the installer doesn't do it, well, they can revoke that certification. But if it gets really messy, the installer is not interested in putting it right for you, then you are back to your basic consumer rights and any protection from credit cards like Section 75. Now this can leave some homeowners with a pretty bad taste in their mouth because they've gone out, they've hunted for regulated installers, they've paid for these protection fees, it's gone wrong and what MCS are not going to do is send another installer to come and fix all of your issues. They will be there to help you, to give you advice and to lean on that installer but they have no physical power to enforce them to put things right. If you have picked a bad MCS installer then having problems on the job is probably a good outcome because the worst case scenario is that they're going to go bust and if they go bust what's going to happen to a deposit that you've paid for and you've not had the balance of an install or an install that you're left with that is a complete mess. From a deposit perspective, then your first point of call is the consumer code body that was managing that installer. So this will be someone like Highs or RECC, REC. Now if REC can't help you, then you can go to your bank and you can do something called a Section 75 claim. So you can do a chargeback to the bank and say, this company's gone bust, I used your credit card to pay the deposit and they will refund that money. It's not an easy process, but it's not too bad. And on that point, if you're paying deposits for any renewable installation, always use a credit card or a funding mechanism to make sure you get that Section 75 protection. Now, what about if you've had an install done, you've not lost any deposit monies, but after the install, you're not happy, and then the installer goes into administration. Well, here's where you're gonna claim on your insurance-backed guarantee. The protection agency are gonna mandate that installers purchase their insurance-backed workmanship warranties. Now, I haven't known anyone claim on these warranties before. They're not cheap, like we said, they can be like 50 to 200 pounds per install. So you hope they would give you a good level of protection, but I've got no personal experience of it and therefore I can't really comment to the level of protection you actually would have. Let's summarize our thoughts here. Do we think that MCS is a scam? No, I don't think it's a scam. I don't think it's a badge of quality. It is a minimum standard that has certain protocols to catch out cowboys. The assessment process isn't overnight. You need to apply, you need to go through the office assessment, you have to have a physical site installed. All of that costs money and it takes about six months. So there are upsides here because cowboys can't just enter the market, appear overnight, take a load of money, and run off. Now this scheme isn't perfect, it has its flaws. I think they could do more with monitoring, they could do more with enforcement when you do experience an issue as a householder. What is a real challenge for MCS is the rate of growth of this industry. We looked the other week, there's now over 5,000 solar installers in the market. They have to assess, they have to monitor, they have to deal with compliance. They also have all of these products. The market is absolutely booming and new products hit the market every day. They need to regulate those as well. So they do have a pretty big job on their hands, but they could make some improvements. Now, as a consumer, what can you do to give yourself an extra layer of protection? Do your research on your installer. It's not just about MCS certification. Are they a member of something like WITCH? WITCH are a consumer action body. If you are a WITCH trusted trader, their office assessment is about 10 times as intensive than the MCS assessment. They're even looking into stuff like the financial health of the business, the history, of the directors of that business also. So they provide an extra level of protection. You can also look at reviews, you can look at the history of the business and take feedback from other people that have used or engaged with that installer.
on the subject of buying solar, if you're in the market to have a solar system or maybe a battery system and air source heat pump installed, then Heatable are MCS approved for all three of those technologies. But in addition to that, we are a witch trusted trader and we have over 12 and a half thousand reviews on Trustpilot. So I'm not going to mention that. Okay. <laughs> so we are a company. Buy from us. Yeah. Ours. Okay. Ready? Go again. Yeah. If you're in the market to buy either solar panels, a battery system, or an air source heat pump, then head over to the Heatable website. You can get a quote, and we are MCS approved. See you on the next one.